Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Now, I gotta say, I usually don't get excited about Windows tablets because everyone that I've tested has been a bit lackluster. Usually powered by Intel, and of course there are a lot of people that stand behind the Surface line. But today, we're going to be taking a look at something that I think is very, very interesting. The brand new Minus Forum V3. This is the world's first AMD powered 3-in-1 tablet. And with this, we do get a pretty powerful APU. It's actually using the new Ryzen 7 8840U. This is the first time that I've genuinely been excited about a Windows-based tablet, and for good reason. This thing is phenomenal. I've been testing it out for the last few days, and it does put down some really good power. We've also got some awesome built-in features here that we've wanted to see in tablets in the past. Mainly AMD with those RDNA 3 graphics, but this also has a free sync display. It is an absolutely beautiful IPS, and we'll go over all the specs in just a second. I think Menace Forum has really knocked it out of the park with this, and if they continue down this path, they could definitely be known for some of the best Windows-based tablets on the market. And with the release of the V3, we're seeing some of Menace Forum's first bundled software, and it's basically a power management system. It's actually an all-in-one system to kind of manage Windows on this tablet. But with this, it does give us the ability to easily go to battery save mode, balance mode, and even performance mode. And the cooling system they specifically designed for this is really nice. We've got a dual fan design with four copper tubes. And even in their performance mode with a 28 watt TDP, I haven't seen this thing go over 81 degrees Celsius, which is great for a Ryzen 7000 series mobile chip. All of the exhaust is actually vented out of the top of the unit, which is great. I've seen some of these tablets coming out of the bottom, the side. This is awesome because we usually don't have the top of our tablets blocked off, so all that air can escape freely. And when it comes to I.O. on the new V3, over here on the right-hand side, we've got two USB 4 ports, and these do run at a 40 gig protocol. We've also got our power slash fingerprint sensor over here. Moving over to the right hand side, we've got our volume rocker, a full size SD card slot, and we've got another USB-C port, but this isn't a normal USB-C port. Menace Forum is calling this V-Link, and basically what we can do here is turn this tablet into an external monitor. We can plug in a mini PC, game consoles, you can even use an HDMI to USB-C converter to get something up and running on this as an external monitor. And finally, down here, we've got five pogo pads, and this is going to allow us to attach their detachable keyboard. I've got all of the accessories here. We're going to take a look at them in just a second, but I did want to go over the full specs because there's a lot built into this that we haven't talked about yet. When it comes to the main bread and butter, this is utilizing the AMD Ryzen 7 8840U. Eight cores, 16 threads, based on Zen 4, so you know we got some really good single and multi-core performance here. A base clock of 3.3 GHz and a boost up to 5.1. We've also got the Radeon 780M iGPU based on RDNA 3 with 12 compute units, and this will run it up to 2700 MHz. And since we're using that new Ryzen 8000 series chip, they have upgraded the NPU. They're calling this Ryzen AI. And from that new NPU, we can get up to 16 tops of AI performance, but 38 tops total chip AI performance utilizing the CPU, NPU, and iGPU. You can get the new V3 tablet with up to 32 gigabytes of LP DDR5 RAM at 6400 MHz. And I was really surprised to see that this actually supports a 2280 M.2 NVMe SSD. I've got a one terabyte unit here with 32 gigabytes of RAM, but you can add up to a two terabyte drive in this unit. It's got a 14 inch, 165 Hertz free sync compatible glare free IPS display with a resolution of 2560 by 1600. It's 100% P3 and up to 500 nits of brightness. Quad speakers that do meet the requirements of Dolby, but they haven't been certified at the time of making this video. I gotta say, they sound really good. Two speakers on each side. We've got a 50.82 watt hour battery with 65 watt PD fast charging. It's 946 grams without a keyboard or the back stand, and we're going to be running Windows 11 Pro on the V3 today. And of course, just like most manufacturers of these Windows tablets, there are some accessories that you can pick up, like an active pen, and this is definitely a must for most people who are looking for a Windows tablet. So yeah, V3 does support an active pen with up to 4,096 levels of pressure and an MPP 2.6 SLA pen. That's the one that they're selling over on their website, but you could use a third party if you wanted to. 
Personally, I'm not an artist, but in my next video when we do the full review, I will be installing Photoshop and we'll try to draw something. I'm not sure what, but we're definitely going to be testing the pen out. Another accessory they're going to be offering is the stand. Basically, magnetically attaches to the back, kind of folds out. And of course, the detachable keyboard and trackpad. I will say I'm a little confused about this rear stand. Hopefully it is redesigned before the official release of the V3 because as you can see it's going to cover up our intake vents for those fans. So if you wanted to run this in high performance mode there's a chance you will hit thermal throttle because we're not getting any fresh air in there. All they really need to do is just redesign it a bit, get those cutouts on the back, but once everything's together we've got the rear stand and that detachable keyboard. It's still a really thin setup. Everything works out really nicely, and I'm super glad to see this multi-touch trackpad here. It's actually a much larger trackpad than I'm seeing on a lot of these detachable keyboards, so it works out great for turning this into a laptop. Smooth interface, multi-touch support, and it's not a Bluetooth connection, so we don't need to recharge this keyboard either. Super smooth. It's got plenty of power, even at 15 watts. We'll head into the task manager. I'll show you we've got that Ryzen 7 8840U, 8 cores, 16 threads. We've also got 32 gigs of RAM with this, and I'm not sure if they're going to be offering a 16 gig model, but this is running at 6400 megahertz. We've also got a 1 terabyte M.2 NVMe SSD. It's a 2280 drive. It's not one of the smaller ones we have to use for the handheld, so these are much cheaper. Upgrading the 2 terabytes down the road should be a lot less expensive. And of course, we've got that Radeon 780M iGPU. Out of the box, there's two gigs dedicated, but of course, since it's an iGPU, it will use up to 16, so we've got more than enough with the 32 gig model here. Very snappy interface, browsing the web, checking emails, you're not gonna have an issue even in low power mode, which is 15 watts for this device. Plus, we can go up to 28 watts, and around 18 is kind of our mid-range with this device using the Minusform software they have built in. Gaming on this is great. You can play AAA games on this tablet. We're definitely going to be testing some out in this video, but uh, real quick, I mean, as you can see, scrolling is really smooth, and right now I've actually only got this set to 60 hertz. Remember, this is a 165 hertz display, and it supports FreeSync. This is also the first time we're seeing Minusform software known as vSpace. This will allow us to control every aspect of the tablet, control the brightness, volume, refresh rate. Plus, we've got some performance settings here, which is really great. You don't have to install a third-party app to get the wattage up on this, you know, to go into high performance mode. vSpace will also give us just a nice little rundown on everything that's going on with the tablet from our free space on that SSD, free RAM. We can clean up the RAM if we want to but my favorite section here is this performance section. So we've got three different pre-made profiles. Power balance is gonna give us a TDP of 18 watts. This is good across the board with the 8840U. Power save is gonna take us down to 15 watts. It's also gonna lower that brightness. And we've also got our high performance profile. This will work on battery, but in order to enable it, at least right now, I do have to plug it in and then unplug it. It'll take us up to 28 watts, and this is the best performance we're gonna get out of this. Minus Forum is working on an update right now just to allow us to go there at basically any time. But another thing I wanted to show you here was, yeah, this display does support adaptive sync. It also supports free sync. So we can go AMD optimized or we can turn it on at any given time. Really awesome to see this. So we've got a variable refresh rate display on this device. So going into a game profile, you can see free sync can be enabled. If it wasn't here, it wouldn't be listed. Let's go ahead and check out a little bit of video playback here. We're just going to go with one of these uh, demos on YouTube. I do have Stats for Nerds on. And since we're working with a 2.5K display, I mean, we could go up to 4K. Right here, we're going to go up to 1440p. Still looks absolutely beautiful. This is going to be great for media playback. In my next video, we will test out that active pen. Uh, I'll install Photoshop and see if I can draw a few stick figures here and there. I'm not an artist, so doing some kind of portrait or anything like that is kind of out of the question, but we can definitely check out how that works. But the next thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks that I ran on this. And keep in mind, we are in performance mode, so a 28 watt TDP. When it comes to Geekbench 6, single core 2467, multi 11,027. Now it's time to check out some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark. And what I've noticed here with these Ryzen 8000 series APUs, as opposed to the 7000, so the 8840U versus the 7940U, 
Night Raid and Fire Strike scores are coming in a bit lower at the same kind of TDPs, but we're actually seeing a nice jump when it comes to Time Spy because with this at 28 watts, 3,108. This is a great score for an iGPU, especially given that we're only at 28 watts. But these are synthetic benchmarks, and now it's time to check out some real world gaming. First up, we've got Forza Horizon 5. This is one of those that I always like to test just to see if it's kind of performing the same as the other chips. And yeah, I mean, we're seeing some great performance here with this game. 1200p medium settings and 18 watt TDP. We're not using FSR, and of course, if you wanted more out of it, you could enable a little bit of scaling there, either using FSR or even Fidelity CAS. But at an 18 watt TDP, we had an average of 74 FPS. I also like to throw at least one fighting game in, so I went with Mortal Kombat 1, 1200p, low, 18 watt TDP. And with this game, we do need to enable a little bit of FSR. It's set to balanced, but we're at a constant 60. Fighting games on the 8840U, even at these lower wattages, do work really well. Here's Spider-Man, Miles Morales, and with this game at an 18 watt TDP, we will have to drop it down to 900p, but it still looks great on this display. If you take that wattage up, go to performance mode, you could definitely run this at 1200, about the same as you're seeing here. But one thing I did want to show you is, yeah, we do have free sync enabled. I've got the refresh rate set at 165 hertz, and I'm really glad they have that variable refresh rate display here with the V3. When it comes to harder to run AAA games at these lower wattages, a lot of the stuff's going to be hard pressed to hit 60 if you got those settings up, but we can definitely hit 40 with a lot of the games out there just fine at 18 watts. And having free sync enabled will eliminate any kind of screen tearing. In my experience on other devices with it enabled, it just kind of makes it a lot smoother at those lower frame rates. Here's Cyberpunk 2077. And this game usually gives us an average of around 74 at 1200p at a higher TDP on the 7840U and 8840U devices. Right now, we're only at 18 watts, and I did drop it down to 900p just because of that. Low settings, and by the end of this run here, we had an average of 67 FPS. I mean, it's definitely playable on the V3 at 18 watts. And the final thing I wanted to test here was Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, and I'm just using that built-in benchmark. We are in performance mode, so a 28 watt TDP, 1200p, balanced performance, and FSR is also set at balanced. At 28 watts, by the end of this run, we had an average of 92 FPS on this Ryzen-powered tablet. And, you know, this is actually a pretty well-optimized game. I've actually had really good luck on these iGPUs with this, given all the settings that we can change around and the inclusion of FSR. So another one definitely playable on the V3. So far, the Minisform V3 is turning out to be one of the best Windows-based tablets that we've taken a look at over here on the channel. And we haven't done much because I really don't get excited about them. But with this, we've got the AMD Ryzen 7 8840U. Beautiful 14-inch FreeSync display. Does support USB 4, so I will be testing an eGPU on this in my next video. And I've got a lot more testing to do. Definitely want to get a feel for how long this battery is going to last in each of the different performance modes. So that's something else we'll be taking a look at. And if you can think of anything else you want to see running on the Menace Forum V3, let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for my first look video. If you're interested in learning a little more, I'm going to leave a link in the description. It'd also be really cool if you could hit that like button and think about subscribing so you know when I post the next one. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.